And now, from the dark corners of the internet, where exploits run wild, packets aren't the only things getting sniffed, and the cocktails, they flow steady. It's Paul Security Weekly! Brought to you by Onapsis, the leading provider of solutions to protect ERP systems from cyber attacks. Customers can secure their SAP and Oracle business critical platforms from espionage, sabotage, and financial fraud risks. Visit them on the web at onapsis.com. And by Pony Express. Check out the Community Edition and turn your Nexus 7 into a lean, mean, pen testing machine. For all those hard to reach places, there's Pony Express. Visit them on the web at PonyExpress.com. It's now time to fire up a packet capture, pour yourself an adult beverage, and give the intern control of your pwn plug, because here's your host. He's a man who will gladly tell you about his cocktail. Paul Asadorian! <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to this edition of Security Weekly. This is episode 413. 13. Wow. For Thursday, April 9th, 2015. So hold on to your pen testicles because this is going to be a four segment show. That's right. Count them. Four segments in this show. Confucius say, man with four balls cannot walk. Is that what he said? <laughs> I don't yes. think that's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, let's kick it off a couple of announcements. Come to Embedded uh, Device Security Assessments for the rest of us, a two day hosted class at Back Black Hat Las Vegas. August 1st through the 2nd, 3rd through the 4th. Register at the link in the show notes or by visiting securityweekly.com forward slash IOT. Security Week listeners receive 10% off products in our store with the discount code IHACKNAKED. Security Besides Orlando is a community driven event. Will there be, <coughs> excuse me, will there be excuse me's and a wonderful conference happening in lovely Orlando, Florida. Uh, right, April, be, right before the SANS conference. Right before I the SANS admit. conference. Yeah. April 11th and 12th. So you can go to B-Sides Orlando, then attend the SANS conference where you can take classes from people like Larry Pesce, who'll be teaching wireless ethical hacking and defense coming up in Austin, which we'll talk more about in a future segment on this show. Um, Baltimore, Berlin, and lots of other places. So make sure you... Coming up more later this year if you can't make it to any of those. Excellent. <clears throat> Um, we're going to talk all about Source Boston. Oh, the question of the week. So we're still working on last week's question of the week, <laughs> which was <laughs> oh, the cocktail. Epic, epic, epic. cocktail. Uh, <laughs> listener Apollo wrote in with custom cocktails for all of the members, or most of the members here on Security Weekly. Yeah. So mine's called like the Smoking Hot Acidorian, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> mine's um, the Harry Larry. Yours is the Harry Larry. And uh, we're working on getting the ingredients, which aren't readily available. We may have to. All of mine are pretty, pretty. Yeah, readily available. yours more. Readily, mine has a tobacco liqueur in it, which is not easy to find. No, and there is a liquor store in Providence I'm going to visit that has the fire cider, which uh, is the other component. Yes, which you can make, but it takes about a month. Yeah, so I'm not that patient. So, <laughs> uh, the question for this week, and the winner receives a free Hack Naked T-shirt. Send us your favorite Linux command line tip or trick. Send them to PSW at securityweekly.com. We'll pick a winner. Ooh, Send ooh, you a free ooh, hack ooh, naked t shirt. Ooh, Security Weekly ooh, employees and hosts are not ooh, eligible now. Because you, no, I mean, if you no, need no, a hack no, naked. No, 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 no. Screen doesn't count. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> I had to. Oh, boy. I so, we've got Mr. Rob Shane on the line, who is the organizer of Source Boston and the owner and founder of Big Brain Security. Welcome, Rob, to the show. How's it going, Paul? It's going good, Rob. Nice to have you back on the show. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun that uh, Rob and I have been having preparing for this segment and talking about all things Source Boston. So um, very excited about Source Boston, of course, and I want to bring Rob on to talk a little bit about that. But I wanted to kind of update everyone with uh, some questions for Rob about what Rob's been working on. So, Rob, what's been going on at, at Big Brain Security? What are some of the things that you do? Well, a um, combination of security consulting and training, and it's basically kind of the 2 or 3.0 version of what I've been doing over the years. So um, really trying to take uh, security training to the next level and move it up the food chain and get it into the hands of folks that need it. Nice. 
So you do some uh, user awareness, but more live training for user awareness, right? Right. Uh, there's plenty of options for people that need you know, the, the e-learning awareness. In fact, my last company was all about that. But there really is still a need, even today, to get in front of people and actually have conversations with them. So I'm trying to make sure that the things I'm delivering now are all on the order of high-value workshops and seminars where we're actually you know, solving real problems in the classroom. Very cool. So uh, what are some of the ways that you can keep your security awareness program up to date, right? Because things change. Personnel sure. changes, threats change. How do, you, how do you keep it up to date? Well, the first part of it is really just a mindset. And it, the mindset involves stop treating it like it's a one and done thing. Uh, a lot of companies will, they'll do the annual security training for the checkbox of their mm -hmm. compliance. But really, if I could give you just a kind of a quick little analogy, um, this is a Rubik's Cube. And I could explain to you that it's possible to solve the Rubik's Cube very quickly, and you would know that it's possible. I could even show you what some of the moves are, and you'd see that they're possible. And then if I actually had you do it, I could walk you through some of them, and then you might be able to slowly work your way through it, right? That's about the level at, at best that we typically go to on our uh, security training. If I actually sat down with you for an extended period of time, I could teach just about anybody how to do this. I've taught my wife how to do it in about a minute and a half. Um, so it's, you know, anybody can pick this up and, and learn it. And it's the same thing with security. Security is a very learnable skill. And in my experience teaching folks over the years, um, I've rarely found someone that just can't learn it. And so it's really just a matter of keeping it fresh and up to date and making sure that we're giving people, teaching people the way they actually learn as human beings. Mm -hmm. So the one and done model doesn't work. It's really more about sprinkle a little information, you know, this month and next week, give them some more and then another month, give them something else. And, you know, Think of it like a marketing program as much mm, as it yeah, is more, an education yeah. program. That makes mm. a huge difference. Yeah, no, I, I think that's important. You also were telling me about how uh, some of the training you're doing is training the trainer. That kind of like we as security geeks sometimes don't always have some of the best methods for training people. So what are some of the gaps in those skills that you're helping to uh, to bridge? Sure. So at my uh, my last gig, I had to basically invent a train the trainer program for my own trainers to teach them what I wanted them to do. So um, this will be the first time I'm actually putting this together for more of a public audience. And, but it's, it's really just a matter of rethinking how we explain things. Because a lot of times the, the, the person presenting might be really smart and might understand completely themselves. But there's a huge gap between what's in your head and what's in the other person's head. And trying to bridge that gap is the hard part. And a lot of times it's just simple little things like um, giving a, a demo in a way that everybody understands it rather than just quickly diving into technical details, setting a little bit of context up front, mm -hmm. um, you know, answering questions in front of a group in a way that doesn't alienate the entire audience while you're doing it, right? There's, there's, there's a whole slew of little tips and tricks you can, you can bring to bear that makes you a much more effective presenter and allows you to communicate what you're trying to get across much more clearly. Mm. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, let's talk a little about training the managers. And this is a, a pretty common problem, Rob that mm -hmm. I run into, and in fact, we're doing a webcast coming up uh, when Michael Santarcangelo comes on the show. We'll talk a little more about the webcast we're giving. It's essentially, you know, you've done an assessment or a pen test, and you've got to explain those results to management, and they, I don't want to say they don't get it, but there's a communications gap there, and yep. there's lots of things we can do to fix that problem, but one of which is to train the managers and C-levels about security and how it, mm -hmm. you know, help them understand it. What does that mean? Sure. So, Again, this, this kind of also goes back to starting with the technical folks that are communicating because I, you know, mm. I can only be in so many places at the time and so can you, right? So um, teaching people how to explain clearly matters. And I've found that managers and executives, they're not dumb people. They can, we, a lot of technical folks tend to write them off as, oh, they're not technical. They don't get it. But that's not actually true. Mm. And in fact, if you use clear analogies and simple explanations, not condescending explanations, but just simple, clear explanations – I have been able to explain how TCPIP works to a room of all business people, and they get it, and it matter, and it, that stuff like that matters. And being able to <clears throat> shift, instead of blaming it on uh, the manager and saying, "Oh, they don't get it," put it back on yourself and say, "Well, how could I explain it more clearly in a way that they do?" Because I have found that when I put it the, the spotlight back on myself right. and try to figure out, "Well, how could I actually get my point across more clearly?" and I always ask myself the question. Um, what do I want them to think, do, or feel at the end of whatever I'm trying to communicate to them? Mm -hmm. And right, so if you can, if you go into it 
owning that responsibility as the person presenting, you really can generally find explanations. And it helps sometimes to do things like have a, get a test audience of some business folks and say, you know, this one doesn't count, but let me explain this to you and tell me where you don't get it. And, mm-hmm. you know, so we, we tend to, you know, the, the, the folks that are really smart at doing the work tend to think that they're also really smart at doing the presentation. And it's a, it's a whole other skill that we tend to not realize needs to actually be practiced and worked on is what, you know, to get good at it. Mm. Yeah, no, your, your last statement is certainly true. It's something that you absolutely have to practice and continue to work on throughout your career. You should yes. never settle for where you're at. I've found it always kind of strive yep. to that next level. Uh, there's always something new to learn in, in presenting and training uh, skills. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, along those lines, you said something very interesting to me that you were doing some threat modeling training. So I guess first, Rob, explain the context of threat modeling and what it is, because it can mean different things to different people. And then how are you sure. structuring some of your training around that? Sure. Um, so I, I kind of got introduced to threat modeling back when I was at, at Stake, and we used to go around and do live threat models for real companies. And basically show up and ask them a bunch of questions about what they're doing, understand them, you know, their architectures and their systems, how they all tie together. And then we would essentially hypothesize how we could break in, and that would basically feed into the penetration test. Mm-hmm. Um, that tends to be very effective, but it's also rather expensive. So I've over the years, I've been experimenting with various ways to teach people how to fish rather than just give them a fish. So this is my latest incarnation of that is what I like to do is I'll bring a, a group – usually ideally an entire development team all the way from the architects and developers to the managers and the testers and anybody that's involved in the process of developing the system, get them all in one room and I'll run a workshop where I I teach them a little bit, but essentially the whole point of the teaching is to get to the point where I say, all right, tell me about your systems. Tell me about your actual systems that you're working on. Draw the picture on the whiteboard and then I'll teach them how to just using the whiteboard, how they can go about the process of, picking apart their own architectures, looking for the kinds of flaws the way a hacker would. Mm. I think that's, so that's what I think of when I think of threat modeling. And I think that's hugely important. I don't think we do enough of that. I don't, you know, maybe right. I'm not close enough to, but I, I don't see a lot of that training out there. And I think maybe it happens one-on-one sometimes when you're doing some consulting, but I don't think to the depth that you're talking about, and I think if we were to arm a lot of the internal IT teams with that knowledge of threat modeling, get them to do it on a regular basis, we could greatly improve security, I think, above and beyond some of the other things that we, we're doing today in the industry. I think it's probably one of the most valuable things you could do, because if you look at the, uh, you know, the, the cost of a bug over time, the exponential curve, mm-hmm. we, tend to, we tend to solve the problem up here at, you know, at, the, at the end. That's penetration testing and um, all the various tools and technologies you can buy to solve the problem when it's in production. But we could save so much, so much money by just tr- looking at our systems up front before we've gone too far into them. It, it makes a huge difference, and it's a very, very easy way to be proactive. And Absolutely. you can train an entire team to do it, and it actually helps to build up a security culture around that project for that team. And it, it tends to have la- very lasting results. It's a, it's a, honestly, it's really, really cheap insurance. And I'm a huge subscriber to that theory of building security culture. I learned that early on in my career when I was at university. And said, you know, the only way we're right. going to make headway here is to build some uh, security into the culture. And I think that's super important. It's not necessarily the easiest path, right? But it, I think it pays some really high dividends. Right. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I've definitely seen that the companies that really take this on as a project and decide we are going to build a culture of security and starting with you know, you, often they start with the developers because they're the ones probably adding the most risk. But then filtering it out to the managers and the other and the various other parts of the teams, it makes a huge difference. It really does. Um, so, Rob, you uh, are now the owner and curator, as it were, of the Source Conference, uh, which happens in Boston and uh, other places as well uh, in the past. And the next one's coming up is, in fact, Source Boston. Uh, so why don't you tell us about the... What's, what's the culture like inside of Source Boston and what's the, the, you know, the conference about? So Source Boston's an event I've always, you know, I helped get it started. And that was actually the reason why I took it on is I really think it's a kind of a unique environment where we bring the business folks together with the technical folks. And there's, so there's a, there's a strong hacker community element, but there's also a strong business community element. And it kind of brings it together into a, a single event that's fairly unique as far as I've seen. And it really is a, 
it's one of those ways I've found that helps to bridge the communications gap between those two groups of folks. And we, we get talks that appeal to both sides, and we also tend to get ones that bridge right in the middle. So, um, it, and we, we set it up in a way that makes it so that we are helping people to interact and, and to bridge some of those communications gaps that we're talking about. And it's, a, it's just a really good venue for that. It's a, it's a relatively small event, and uh, I want to grow it a bit, but I still want to keep it relatively small and intimate because one of the nice things about it is uh, we get some of the best folks um, from both sides, and they get to all be in the room together hanging out for a couple days. And in fact, if they come to the trainings earlier, they potentially could be there for four days and really get some, t some good face time. It's a great networking event as well as just a learning <coughs> event. So how many different uh, talk tracks do you have and what different categories of talk tracks? We tend to break it up a little bit depending on what we've gotten that year. So it, we, we, it, it tends to be like application security, security technology, and business. But honestly, like if we get a lot of mobile talks that year and that, if that's the hot topic, we tend to adjust towards that. Mm -hmm. Or one year it was cloud. So we, we try to not keep it so rigid that it can't be adapted to what's current. Because I, I like it to be a current event, something that where you're, you can go, you can learn about what's currently happening, you can have lots of intelligent conversations with smart people about what's currently happening, and you can walk away with some practical things you can do in your own environments. And have you released any of the who will be presenting or keynoting the conference yet? Or I think I said you're, working, you're going to release that next week? We're going to be releasing that next week. We, uh, we were actually picking the talks this week. Uh, the winter basically crushed me personally, so uh, we're a little bit behind the eight ball on uh, announcing the talks, but... Uh, uh, they're definitely coming out next week and there will be some trainings announced as well. In fact, two of them are the ones that I already kind of alluded to, which is the technical train, the trainer and the application security for managers. And last year's keynote, uh, one of them was Bruce Schneier. I remember sitting yep. in on that last year. So you get some really great speakers, um, for the we've conference. Always, so, yeah, we've always prided ourselves on that. Um, a lot of us are speakers, so we, we're pretty tapped into the, the speaker community. So we've always, we originally started source as a way to get, the quality of talks you normally need to get on an airplane to go see in Boston. That was the original genesis of it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of expanded from there, but that we still always, no matter what, we always get a very solid lineup. And it's, people always give us lots of kudos over the quality of the talks. And so uh, what are the dates of the event and, and how much are tickets? So the, the trainings are going to be on May 25th and 26th. And the actual conference is on 27th and 28th. The, um, the training, uh, I'm sorry, the conference tickets themselves are $4.95 a piece right now. And um, at the door, they're $5.95, so you still get a little bit of a deal now. For the, um, for the first three people that email me at rob at sourceconference.com, I will extend a complimentary half-off ticket to those three people. Um, and the trainings are uh, on the 25th and 26th, those are $9.95 each, and you get a free ticket to Source when you buy that. And for the very, this is, I'm only going to have one seat for this, but for one person, whoever emails me first at rob at sourceconference.com, I'll give you a half off of whichever training you want, either the technical train, the trainer training, or the uh, security for managers training. Wow. Rob's being really generous nice. on the show. Nice. And, so, and Rob, you should only email if you actually are intending on going, right? Co correct. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't, eat, don't waste up a slot for someone that actually wants right. it. Right. To, to, quote, to quote Will Wheaton, don't be a dick. Yeah. You can't, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you can't <laughs> scalp the ticket at the door. So don't. Right. don't right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Right. We'll know. <laughs> yeah. So the first person that emails you gets half off the training. The first person that, call, that emails me and asks me about the training will get half off the training ticket price okay. of nine ninety five. So basically, it's like getting uh, buying a source ticket and getting the training for free. Gotcha. <laughs> and then. Three more people can email you after that and get Correct. half off a uh, uh, conference fee. Correct. Gotcha. Well, that's awesome. That's, that's a great deal, Rob. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, I do want to mention that Security Weekly will be at Source Boston uh, as our neighbors to the north are very close. We'll mm -hmm. be heading up there. And we'll be selling our Hack Naked t-shirts at the conference discount rate of $10. Uh, and we'll nice. also be there. We're going to bring one of our cameras, and we're going to be doing some interviews uh, at the table. So if you want to come and do an interview and sit down with us, or you just want to come you know, check us out and uh, buy a t-shirt and hang out with us for a little bit, we'll be there both days. So excellent. Sounds good. Rob, thank you very much for uh, for coming on the show, and we look uh, look forward to next week where we get to you know some more details about Source, and we'll be posting it out to our social media as well. So make sure you stay tuned to the show and in all of our social media. And now, is there a Twitter handle for the Source Conference? Yeah, it's at SourceConf. So it's S O U R C E C O N F. 
Gotcha. So make sure you check back on that. Some big announcements coming next week for the Source Conference. Rob, always a pleasure to speak with you, my friend. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Rob. With that, we're going to take a short break, come back. We're going to get some more of our hosts on the show. We're going to get our next guest on the show. Uh, it's going to be epic. We've got Steve Crocker on the show, who's the author of RFC1 coming up. And we've got a bunch of other segments uh, coming up on the show. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.